In the third week of the modern Beethoven, Maestro Zinman conducts Beethoven's first and third symphonies coupled with Hartmann's Concerto Funebra for violin and strings played by Gil Shaham. And this, for me, is a great sort of culmination for the project uh, in the sense that the two symphonies combined on this program tell us something about Beethoven's musical development and about Beethoven. I mean, it's thrown around all the time to the point where it's become cliche, but Beethoven as a revolutionary composer, which he really was. I mean, cliches are cliches because usually they're true. Uh, the, the combination of the first and the third symphony allows us to hear why Beethoven was a revolutionary composer. You hear in Beethoven's first symphony a piece that's very much rooted in the world of the late 18th century, in the world of Mozart and Haydn. There are touches, of course, that are Beethoven because he was a composer of singular genius, and it sounds like Beethoven, but he's very much using the tools, the toolbox of his forebears. And in the Third Symphony, you hear something that completely breaks all of those 18th century strictures. Um, in the first movement, rather than starting with a slow introduction, there's two chords and we're off. There's no, there's, there's no 18th century sort of nicety of the slow introduction before the allegro itself, the fast section of the first movement begins. Uh, you also have a moment in the first movement where Beethoven has the horn at the moment when he brings the main theme of the movement back after a, a sort of turbulent dramatic development section. He has the horn start early. Fancy way to, to impress your friends is called a false recapitulation. Uh, you, have, you have that, I mean, you have all of these moments where Beethoven is playing with rules, breaking the rules. In the second movement, Beethoven gives us this magnificent funeral march. It's, it's full of tragedy and drama and pathos. I think Beethoven is really capturing the historical moment in Europe, the, the, the rise of Napoleon and the impending uh, Napoleonic Wars sweeping through Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, this is something that, that Beethoven is, is aware of and, and very much thinking about in this piece. It's interesting, actually. Beethoven had thought of dedicating the Eroica Symphony to Napoleon. And uh, when he saw that Napoleon had declared himself emperor of France, which he saw as kind of a, a power grab, he scratched out the dedication um, and dedicated it to the memory of a great man. So, so Beethoven really had an emotional connection to what was going on politically in Europe at the time. Uh, in the third movement, you have this just groundbreaking example of Beethoven writing a scherzo. It's as far away from the 18th century minuet as you can get. It's, it's, it, it has this sort of just relentless, perpetual motion impulse. It goes, 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 and it never lets up. And it's thrilling music. And in the trio, you have some of the greatest horn writing in all the symphonic literature and just these magnificent sort of horn calls layered one on top of the other. And the idea of hearing the, the horn section of the New York Philharmonic play this, I'm already excited and I still have to wait, you know, <laughs> nearly a year. Uh, the fourth movement is a theme in variations. And this is something that composers had done before. Haydn had ended several of his symphonies with theme and variations. For example, the Horn Signal Symphony ends with a wonderful set of theme and variations. But the scope, the scale, on which Beethoven is writing. It seems like he gives us an example of every, everything he can do as a composer in this theme and variations. There's a magnificent example of his counterpoint and his fugue in the, in the middle of the movement. There are all these wonderful examples of his instrumentation, of what he can do harmonically, of what he can do with a very simple melody, how he can spin it out, uh, and how he can bind all of the individual variations into an overarching dramatic argument. So that rather than seeing it as, oh, here's another variation, and isn't that nice, and it's different, and oh, look what he's doing there, the flutes, and that sort of thing. You don't, the, the sense of variation almost d dissolves before the, the compositional prowess of Beethoven as he just sweeps us up and creates this dramatic story through these little contrasting episodes.